Hello everyone, and welcome back to episode 7 of our FTP Skies Expert Let's Play. Today guys, we are going to make our factory, finally. I know it's been a while, and I know I've been stalling, getting chapter 1 done. However, as you saw, I've gone ahead and built a large enough room. I will probably end up having to make a basement to this place later on, and we'll move our power down there for now. We're just going to do an upper floor. It's not too bad. The way I'm getting concrete now, by the way, is by using our power source over here and using the super cooler, as you see. It is decently fast. However, you can't automatically output with these guys, so kind of kind of sucks. You have to come do it manually. However, that's how we got all of our concrete, and obviously with the sand and gravel over here. Here, I've gone ahead and put sifters under here with pusher upgrades. Well, only this one actually with pusher upgrades. And then there's a puller upgrade pushing south because that's facing south, right? And I've gone ahead and make kelp and uh, clay because those are two things we're going to need today. And it's just a uh, hand crank back here. So it's nothing too big. But yeah, so we made a bunch of concrete. I still have a decent amount of concrete powders to go and cook. But for now, we've built our area. It wasn't too bad. We used our infinite builder's wand and this measuring tape here, which is actually really useful. It's from measurements. It's just wool, wool, and iron iron plates you just right click and you can measure blocks it's very simple right and then the middle block will tell you how much space left so 45 so it's a 45 by 45 right really cool block on today's agenda it's getting our kiln coke and blast bricks all made up so we can make the ovens of each respective thing i've gone ahead and gathered a lot of the materials in here not all of them unfortunately because you do need creosote and you also need where is it you need creosote and you also need deployers deployers require brass to make and that requires the kiln brick so it's a bit of recursive crafting over there however first thing we can go and do is make our kiln bricks these guys are pretty easy all you need is bricks sandstone above a heated mixer so we have our mixer in here we have a basin i actually have to probably make some more basins here in a second i went ahead and made the belts like i said from the kelp so you just smelt kelp in a furnace you get dried kelp and you can make belts and those will just move items instead of having to use depots and it will allow for much easier processes and also can remove rotational force up and down so we'll go ahead and use those later i need my blaze burner need my water wheels go ahead and grab some shafts maybe some mechanical belts you never know a gearbox or two might help some vertical gearboxes so we're just gonna put our, all of our water wheels over here for now like i said these aren't a permanent solution however i do need something to create a rotational force for the time being and i guess water wheels will be that solution i do have a bucket over here not a bucket a basic water tank and these guys are actually really useful they act as buckets for a mechanism and these guys are just the iron substrate plus redstone if you shift and use your mouse wheel it'll go bucket mode on bucket mode off so with bucket mode on this will act like a bucket and i can place fluids down like so and there we go and that's basically a 32,000 bucket or sorry a 32 bucket bucket on hand right so you don't actually have to go and refill it refill it re re refill it each time right really useful so we can go ahead and take our rotational force out of this guy and what we want to do is speed him up so we do need some cog wheels we'll get two cog wheels of each and this is the same principle we used earlier so we take his power we put him into a large cog wheel that goes into a small one which goes into a large one which will go into a small one like so and now this guy right here is much faster and we'll use this rotational force as our primary source of power for the base before i do that i actually went in ahead and made a speedometer or stressometer sorry which was made from a speedometer which is the andesite casing in the compass and this guy will tell us how much stress capacity we have so with the amount of water wheels we right now have we have 1500 stress units available to us which is actually really nice so we can go ahead and take this power out and the first thing we do need is the mechanical mixer so we'll probably go something we'll keep this few blocks do this i do need the blaze burner underneath first and that's not the right concrete unfortunately however i do need the, that there you like that and to get our rotational force upwards we'll just use a vertical gearbox right here oh, sorry we'll use a regular gearbox right there we'll use a vertical gearbox here and then we can just put a shaft in the middle slight modification i just went and changed that up i added another cog wheel moved it over did a simple just gearbox in the middle i don't know why i had two gearboxes initially much easier looks a lot better too however we're gonna run this and now we have our basin to smelt kiln bricks the next thing we need is two recipe sequences now the first one requires three deployers the second one requires two deployers a spout and 
a hammer or a press, sorry. And these require four repeating processes each time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run belts off of these guys. Running, you know what? I think running this way is actually fine. If we run two belts parallel to each other. Yeah, I think running two belts parallel to each other is actually fine. And we'll do two out like that. Okay, I've set something really small up here. Some quick explanation. So you need belts going back and forth both ways to move well, items this way down the line and then we need to send it back because it is recursive crafting which means it needs to go through four times right see this little four down here repeat sequence right so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to use andesite funnels or yeah whatever they're called put a chest here andesite funnel andesite funnel and it's going to just go around in a loop however if you do belts down this way what's going to happen is to go back, you need to change the direction of the rotational force. So two cog wheels like so, coming out with a shaft at the back here, will spin the rotational force backwards, and we're sending it back this way. Same with this one, we're taking the same directional force and going back that way. And now we can just grab some chests, and I think I'll grab eight andesite funnels. I think that's too many, but I think that's fine. And if we place chest here and there, and then placed a chest here, you know what? We'll continue our rotational force because we will need it. And if I go like that, and like so, like that, and then in, out, in, out, this guy knows he, like, automatically that they're, they're create a smart, right? So this guy can tell he needs to be put out on a belt because it's traveling away from him. And this guy realizes the belt is traveling into it, so it's an input. So if we just chuck our axe on there, it'll come out the other side. And then same with this one, we chuck our axe on, it'll come out the other side. So very simple. And this guy will go in a pattern circle all the way around. Now that's our kiln bricks done, our blast bricks done, and our coke bricks done. All of these now just require deployers and presses and such on top of them. However, we can't actually make the presses or the deployers like I said because deployers require brass which is our kiln brick so we need to just throw some bricks and some sandstone in this guy and mix it really really fast so I've gone ahead and grabbed that and do I have coal okay so we got some coal just right click that guy 399 seconds is plenty we'll throw the bricks and the sand in there and I also want to just grab a few more basins so I have an output for a lot of these guys and by a few more, I mean one more, because we don't have much andesite alloy left. However, we're going to change that in a while, or just a bit, actually. One cool trick is if you put a basin underneath another basin like this, like one block down and then one block away, it will automatically output this little guy right here. It will automatically output anything that's created inside of here, in here. Another thing about basins is if you want to lock it to a recipe, so if there's multiple recipes that use similar items, all you have to do is right-click on this side, and it says recipe filter right there. And this is the only recipe that can be made in that basin now. So that's useful for stuff with overlapping recipes or overlapping ingredients, right? So you always want to lock the recipe. And then this guy can be turned off and on just with the right click of a hammer. Just in case you actually have two basins set up like this that you don't want to output it. However, we have ourselves 32 kiln bricks, which is plenty enough. We don't actually need that many. However, I do want to have a few set up. So I think we're just going to, as this will be our create wall down here, factories, I guess we can go on this side of the room and set up a few like so. Yeah, this is more than we'll need for a while. And I do need a hammer from industrial foregoing. Do I have the hammer? No, I don't. So I do need this hammer from immersive engineering, which is where I strain no hemp, which is nice. And then I can go over here and right click all of these guys like so we have eight and i'll grab the other eight this is definitely overkill by the way we don't need this many kiln bricks or yeah kiln furnaces but we accidentally made this many so we're going to go ahead and use them now that we have all of our kiln bricks down we actually have to go ahead and make ourselves redstone glass in them which is just glass and redstone and we also have to make a bunch of brass which is copper and nickel oh sorry copper and zinc so we're going to go ahead and fill four of these with copper and zinc four of them with redstone and glass, and then we can go ahead and get ourselves our factory set up. Gone ahead and used this basin here, turned off the output, and just added a fluid transposer onto a fluid tank over here. And this is a way we'll just get all of our primitive slurry. We'll need to make all of the ingots, right? Because the way we're currently making ingots is with the super cooler, with primitive slurry and copper catalysts, and uh, same with the nickel one. So we're going to go ahead and make all of our catalysts up. So I'm just making a bunch of primitive slurry. I'll probably fill this tank up. A little progress update here. I've set up a small little automation for our catalysts. 
Now, I'm not going, well, I say automation, but it's manual still. However, I'm not going to use Catalyst for very much longer, as we have much better options once we unlock Mana Steel for getting all these ingots. However, while I do have them, I set up this little four uh, drawer thing right here. And here, I just got a whitelist. Whoops, I forgot to whitelist this one. And I'm just going to whitelist them as I make them. And we can go ahead and automate, very simply, just putting source gems in this guy up here, and then each catalyst maker, right? So each catalyst is made from a different thing. So I've just gone ahead and stuck them in there. This will automatically pull them out once it's done. And I'm just moving my source over manually for now. As it fills up over here, I come over here, take a few jars like so. They go into here. We have a bunch more stuff in there as well. But yeah, so I just grab it out of here. And over here, we set up our primitive slurry. We made a full tank's worth. And these are just making zinc and copper. Okay, I've gone ahead and made a bunch of brass and redstone glass. I still have a bit more zinc and copper in here smelting. It's not too bad. However, I set this little guy up here. You might have seen him just a second ago. And this will just make us plates. And this is just part of our factory, obviously. So we're going to have a bunch of machines going down this way. And eventually they'll all be automated. And eventually most of these will probably be nulled as there's machines to do these jobs better. However, if we chuck all of our brass in there, I did a clutch in here so I can turn it on and off, by the way. And I flick that on. Our stress units are actually being eaten up quite a lot. I might need to add uh, another water wheel onto this, probably right here. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that just so we have enough stress units to do the four deployers because what it is two deployers in a press and three deployers. Yeah, that's going to eat up a decent amount of stress. I'll just add one more and it should be fine. Okay, just put another water wheel on there. And now we have 1792 stress units available to us. And I think that should be plenty enough for our thing. And we have a few brush sheets made up. So I can go ahead and make our first set of deployers. So we need three brass hands for now. And then we need three electron tubes. And then for this guy, we need two deployers. So we need two more of these and two more of these guys. And we can go ahead and make our five deployers. Now we also need another press, I believe, right? We only need the one press. Yeah. So if I get a press from create, it'll be a lot easier if I do it this way. So we can go ahead and make ourselves another press. And we'll also make ourselves a spout which requires a copper casing. So we need a stripped log. Yep, perfect, I have some. And that will require copper. Oh, we had a bunch of copper in here already. I didn't even bother checking. I just wanted to make that guy over there automated. So we'll go ahead and turn all these into copper. And there we go. And now we can make ourselves a spout. And that should be everything we need for our factory. Okay, so this guy here will be for our coke bricks. It's through deployers. And this guy will be for our blast bricks. Now to connect these, all I need to do is since I already have rotation force going this way, I can stick just one like that in there. And then I can go ahead and bring that through. So those two are not working. And I can run a belt down this way alongside all of these guys. And all of these should run. Oh, we're overstressed. Unfortunate. How much are we overstressed by? 786. Wow, I knew I knew it would be overstressed, right? Like, I know that's a lot on this system. I just figured I might be able to get away with it. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and add a bunch more water wheels for now. I definitely could just run one of these simultaneously. Like, only run one at a time. I just think it would look cool if we did them all at once. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and just add a bunch more water wheels, I guess. I guess I'll do another row in front like this. So since I'm obviously so smart and planned to have... Oh, we have a loop beat. We got to get rid of that. Obviously, since I plan to have more water wheels, <laughs> I added seven more down this way, which used up all of our anti-site casings, unfortunately. I don't have a lead on me. I hope this guy doesn't run away. And that is just because if I ran them this way like I wanted to initially, I realized that this rotation like right here will be messed up. So I needed to like I would need to put it like three apart and it just became a whole mess. So I just decided, you know what, there's enough space back there. I can just run them there and they're only temporary. We're not going to be using them for long. I'm almost out of leads. Come here, Mr. Loopy. This is the one perk of having creative flight, being able to just go into the void like that willy nilly and grab them but yeah we have so many bees over here now <laughs> there we go attach yourself and yeah it's the same loot so i'm just not going to bother picking it up for now at least and there's one of the items way up there which is a mystical white flower anyways 
We're going to get back to this. Bad B. So for some reason, I thought the Coke bricks required bricks. However, they're ash bricks. So what we have to do is we have to put some ash inside of a heated blaze burner, which I've gone ahead and made here. Very simple. I just put, in a, I put our second blaze burner down because you get one from the quest. So luckily we do have the two. So we have one over there now, one here. And this guy right here will make ash bricks. And to make ash, I believe you just need to smelt wood, right? Yeah, you just gotta blast wood. So we need a blaster. Really? You need to do it in a blast furnace? Interesting. Good to know. Okay, so we'll use a blast furnace just because we don't have our fans set up yet, as that would require way too much kinetic stress because we're already running at uh, five. We already have 512 remaining. Speaking of which, we'll turn that off for now. But yeah, we have 3500 stress. This guy won't use any durability for now. And we'll go ahead and set up some ash, I guess. Okay, we got some ash cooked up in the blast furnaces over there. And we'll just go ahead and press this. Oh, we don't want blocks of ash. We want to change this. So once again, see, like I said earlier, where you have overlapping recipes, this guy can be turned into ash bricks, but also ash blocks. Oh, that's also because this thing's not heated. Actually, if it's heated, it should be fine. However, I believe there's another recipe uh, with these guys, which will make ash bricks. Yeah, so these will make ash bricks if left in the compactor too long so what we want to do is just throw two in there grab the ash brick out set the recipe and then we're fine to just chuck the rest in there and 481 seconds yeah that's plenty so we'll go grab some more ash cooking up i just threw a bunch of archwood logs in there because they're so easy to get the archwood logs compared to any other tree you get so many and we'll just throw a bunch of ash in there and we should have plenty of ash bricks so while our ash bricks are cooking up, I went ahead and threw some hoppers on top of our deployers. You need 80 sandstone, 80 clay, and 80 ash bricks to make the coke brick quest, right? Because this requires 20 coke bricks, and it'll give you 7 in return, and you need 27 to make a furnace. So you only need to make 20 of each. I'm going to be making 2 coke furnaces, so I need a bunch more. However, you only need 80 sandstone, 80 clay and 80 ash bricks and this will make all of your coke bricks now the reason i'm making more is because i need i'm going to want creosote production right and we want it fast so we can go ahead and fill this guy up and make our next bricks so what we went ahead and did is i'm making accounting for 27 extra bricks so 47 bricks in total so i added an extra 140 uh or sorry 108 extra blocks in here because 27 times 4 108 so each one of these has 108 extra blocks and i will eventually put 188 ash bricks into this guy and we will have everything we need to make two coke ovens Okay, small progress update here i have gone ahead and set up a small little ethanol and let's see the one vegetable oil section right here nothing too big so i'm going to make three basins of vegetable oil I'm going to make three basins of ethanol, sorry, and we're going to have them pump into the basin in the middle here. However, the reason I'm not using any pipes or anything at the moment from Create or anything like that is they're just large, messy, and you can't really get a compact like area. So we want to make uh, mechanical pipes and also logistic transporters. However, to make mechanical pipes and logistic transporters, you need steel. So once we get our blast furnace up and running, we're going to actually use it, make some steel, because we're going to need it for the diesel engine anyways and then we can go ahead and fill these up with mechanical pipes rather than using that i've also added a small little section down here in which we need spider eyes and sugar for the ethanol for now until we get a better recipe and that'll make our basin up there and then we also do need vegetable oil which will be seeds so we're going to stick tomato seeds here and we will get spider eyes and sugar now sugar isn't too hard to come by oh i'm falling out of the world that was bad my fight didn't reach that far. Oh, I ran out of mana. Oh, that's not good. That is dangerous. <laughs> I filled this up earlier, but apparently it ran out while I was like AFK and doing other things. Okay, that's... <laughs> Oof. Okay, crisis averted for now. That was... Yeah, that was not good. I really should not be over the void, especially like when I don't know how much mana I have left in that thing. However, <laughs> before I was really interrupted by my fall... What we do need is sugar and spider eyes, right? Spider eyes will get from a mob farm, both from spiders and witches. And you'll also get sugar from witches too. However, it's not that much. Like, I only have 228 sugar. And I don't have that many spider eyes actually either. But to get more sugar from sugarcane rather than just crafting it all, 
the best way to do that is using the squeezer. Now we don't have access to the mechanical squeezer just yet, right? We can't make the mechanical squeezer. It requires mana steel, logic circuits, mineral, all these things we don't have. But the squeezer itself, you remember, we needed a pressure plate to reactivate. And so what you do is you use two armor stands and a redstone clock of sorts, whether that be two pointing observers into each other or an actual redstone clock block. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this to no ticks and this guy will pulse infinitely, right? And what we do is we place one armor stand like so. So grab some cobblestone up like this, place our second armor, armor stand, and then let it fall. And these guys will automatically jump up and down. And this is in the quest book for the squeezer, by the way. Notably, there are tales of people using armor stands to avoid manual labor. This is probably the best way to do it. Also, you can use double observers pointing into each other, similar to how we have at a mob farm over there, right? But yeah, so I've just put all the sugarcane in here. I put a hopper in and it automatically will open up the chest and that will be based off of these little lines right here so if i put a hopper facing this way and a chest out here it wouldn't work what you need to do is you need to go input on one side output on the other and make sure you're following these small little lines in the middle there now let's see while we're busy we only have 8500 millibuckets so we do need to wait a bit more on the creosote however i do have everything set up and also this is just an aqueous accumulator with two water logged leaves on the side which will automatically get all the water, leaves don't fall out, and we'll get the water pumping into the back there eventually. I just went ahead and bone mealed a bunch of tomatoes, and these will convert right back into seeds when you craft them. And what's useful about this is that will be our source of vegetable oil for now, so we'll just go ahead and throw those in there. We'll lock these guys so we don't lose our inventories. And yeah, now all these are set up to make plant oil, or vegetable oil, sorry, as well as our ethanol. I made another mistake. Apparently, as you saw earlier in the video, I was not recording when I made the coke bricks. As I was editing the video, I found out I also wasn't recording when I made the blast bricks. So to punish myself, I have loaded back up my single player world while I'm editing, and I'm going to go ahead and use our setup since we still have it here <laughs> to make myself some coke bricks or sorry some blast bricks as you see we already have our blast furnace over there so to explain some things that i did earlier i stuck brass funnels on the end here and basically you can just right click within any item to set a filter so we set the bra uh the blast brick filter on the end here and then we have nether bricks in this deployer with a hopper up top we have our creosote just with a liquid transporter going into a spout and then we have the ever-burning air on the deployer and then a mechanical press and then yeah it's just ran down with a belt like so and if we just go ahead and place our magnet box in here they will eventually go around the loop i'm not trying to spoil what we do later in the episode and they will place down everything so forth and so on and we'll just sit here and we can watch these guys Okay, so I've gone ahead and just made a bunch more steel plates here. Not much else to do. It's just been cooking up in the blast furnace. We do also need to get ourselves a logistical transporter, which requires the engineer's workbench, which requires treated wood and all this stuff. So that's why I went ahead and made some earlier, is we need it to make the bench. Okay, that's our tinker table done. We'll throw that down there. I do have some more iron cooking up in our super coolers over here. Well, I used up all of the primitive slurry. However, we'll be fine. I think that's enough steel for now. Like, it shouldn't need much more. We'll throw that in there. And we can go ahead and make ourselves the bucket for now. We'll make, you know what, that's fine. We'll make 24, not too many. And we'll make ourselves some electronic circuits, which is just quartz, redstone, and gold wire. So I actually had to make myself a rolling mill real quick. And we can just, you know what, where can we chuck this? I feel like it's going to break our system, I'm going to be honest. Let's see. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay, good. So yeah, we just needed a rolling mill, a rolling mill real quick. And that is to make the gold wiring. And we don't have any gold plates, so I'm just going to chuck these guys in this chest here. Get some gold plates going. And then we can make ourselves gold wire. So yeah, you need gold plates inside of a rolling mill, which isn't too bad, actually. And we'll just go ahead and chuck them in there. And two old wires. You know what? That's fine for now. We'll grab six. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. And yeah, so we just go over to the engineer's workbench here, chuck all these resources in, and we can grab ourselves some electronic components, which will allow us to make our logistical transporters. 
and we'll grab 24 of those as well. And now that we did that, we can claim a configurator that is fully charged from the quest book because these guys are actually like they're not a pain to make, right? You just need iron rods, a electronic component, and a redstone repeater. However, you do get one for free, so there isn't actually a need to do so. Now we'll just fly down here and set these up. Okay, perfect. It doesn't actually go in there. And then we'll set that to extract. We will do the same over here, logistical transporter, up like that, set those to extract. And I did throw another drawer down here because we do need to grab the spider eyes out somehow, right? Because these will make fermented spider eyes. Oop, I don't want that on there. So we do actually have to have a means to get those out. But for now, we'll just do mechanical pipes like so. We'll do you extract, extract here as well. And then down here, we just need one going out oh, in a logistical transporter. Then mechanical pipe here, set to extract as well. And that will be our full biodiesel setup done. All I need is a shaft. I'm going to remove this just because I think that is over, going to overstress our network. And I just got to throw a shaft in the middle. And hopefully we only have to remove a few machines temporarily to get this up and running. But I know we're going to have to remove some, right? Yeah, it overstressed immediately. By how much? 512, not too bad. Okay, so we can go ahead and take all of these guys down for now. And that shouldn't affect that, yeah? And yeah, these guys are running. So this will make a vegetable oil. These guys over here will make... Oh, they need water, right? I was going to say, mechanical pipes like so. And we'll just have to take this block. Oh, we lost it. Damn it. Just like that. And there we go. Those guys will run automatically. Oh, oh, that's not ideal. Okay, we'll need to not have it do that. So I went ahead and made a few edits, actually, only because I realized these aren't going to work the way I intend them to unless I brought them down one. So I went ahead and just boosted these all up a block, threw the water down, and I do need to replace the water. So just shift right click the water in. And yeah, so those will automatically output. And then these guys should output into here, which also gives us the freedom because this, we didn't have this before, actually. So this is actually really nice is we can go ahead and grab our drawer right here. I want to make sure no, no, stop, 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 stop. Where's my configurator? There we go. <laughs> Take that out, put those back in there. And what I can do is set these to take items out at the bottom like so. Man, please stop. Nope. There we go. <laughs> okay. And now what I can do with these guys is, oh, I don't want to fall into the void again. Extract here, and that will extract out all the fermented spider eyes. These guys are going in automatically. Tomato seeds are going in automatically. And we should have ethanol production any second now, right? Surely. Oh, no, it's in here. Why doesn't it come out? Maybe because I have two buckets? Okay, there we go. Nice. And I also want to go ahead and grab myself a bucket of ethanol for the quest itself. And if we set this guy... Oh, we do need another shaft. Can I steal one from anywhere in here? No, it doesn't seem I can. Oh, I have some on me. Never mind. And yeah, I just need to connect this now. And we will have our first bucket of diesel. Or 400 millibuckets of diesel. <laughs> it was soon, surely. And there we go. That is our first bucket of diesel. Event, but hello? Okay, I'm not entirely sure what's wrong with, like, fluid drawers. Like, I'm not sure why this fluid drawer is not working. However, I've just gone ahead and thrown it into a fluid tank which we can bucket out of, because yeah, I can throw a bucket in there, right? But if I do this, right, and I just let this go and fill up, I won't eventually, once this fills up to a thousand millibuckets, slowly but surely, it has to remake another set of ethanol. Yeah, there we go. But yeah, that's weird. So yeah, the fluid shore doesn't allow buckets to be taken out of it. I'm not entirely sure why. However, we do have biodiesel production started. We did get our first bucket which means all these quests are now done. And we can go ahead and move on to this section of the quest and do Elemental Craft, Botania, and get our first bit of mana in our diesel generator next episode. I do hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know it was a lot of stuff we did today. We got all of our furnaces, smelters, blast furnaces, everything back there set up. And we set up this crazy, crazy process line of bunch of creative machinery, and it looks super cool. So... Like I said, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. If you learned something new or if there was something you would like to teach me, leave a comment down below. If you guys did enjoy the episode, leave a like on this video. And if you don't want to miss any future videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.